Hello there. So this is part two of the ESP266 based project I'm working on. So in the last video, I introduced you to this setup where we could use the ESP266 to control a external load using this little module over here. So this part of the module will be powered off of 3.3 volts, and this module can be powered off of external power supply, for example, 9 volts or 12 volts, to power a motor, LED, or anything else that cannot be powered directly off of this ESP266's GPIO port. So today we'll go into the circuit design behind this arrangement. Okay, this time I'm going to try something a little bit new. I'm going to actually draw a circuit diagram on a piece of paper because I really didn't have much luck trying to draw it out on the computer and such, so I thought the simplest solution would be just drawing it on a piece of paper. Alright, so I'll go ahead and explain the circuitry using this schematic. What we have up here is basically a simple way to hook up an ESP266 and power it up. By the way, the module I'm using is the ESPWROOM02, and I'm using a breakout board that will allow us to connect it to a breadboard like this. This breakout board I actually got at a electronics store in Tokyo, and it's available as this breakout board and module set for, I think it was 650 yen, so that's about six US dollars or so. Anyway, based off of that, the simplest way to get that module working is to use this arrangement over here. So basically the enable pin is pulled up with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, IO2 in a similar fashion, and the reset pin, I just pulled it up in a similar way with a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor to the 3.3 volt power supply. You could put a reset switch here, which I believe if you press on it, you're supposed to short at the ground, but I'm not exactly sure how that should work, so I'm just gonna probably put a little memo here so that I don't provide any incorrect information. Oh, by the way, the ESP8266 only supports up to 3.6 volts, I believe, so that's the reason why I'm using a 3.3 volt power supply. All right, explaining further, IO0 is a pin that is used to switch the ESP8266 between the normal operation mode and the programming mode. When you want to actually program something into ESP8266, you will have to put this pin to ground. And during normal operations, you will want to pull it up to the 3.3 volt rail using a pull-up resistor. So what I actually ended up doing with my breadboard implementation is to use this little jumper that allows me to switch between the two. And this whole module is connected to a FTDI FT232R based USB to serial converter, which is connected to USB right over here. And the RX and TX pins are connected to the module, so I can program the ESP8266 using the USB port. Oh, I forgot to mention that the IO15 pin of the ESP8266 has to be pulled down to ground using a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now to get to the actual part that will power the external load, the program that's in the ESP8266 that I wrote uses the GPIO 14 pin as the output pin for the part that will control the load. So to control the load, I'm actually using a Darlington transistor over here. I'm just drawing this as a regular transistor because a Darlington transistor is just a cascade of two regular transistors, but this will probably suffice for this explanation because if you look at it, it's basically a regular transistor with a base, collector, and emitter. And by the way, this circuit diagram is drawn such that the collector is on the bottom where you would usually see them written with a collector on top. That's because I have the 12 volt rail or the higher voltage rail drawn, drawn down here. All right, so the IO14 pin of the ESP is connected to the base of the Darlington transistor so I can control when to turn the transistor on or off. And by the way, the Darlington transistor I'm using is a 2SD1828, which is a Sanyo built Darlington transistor that I could get locally. It doesn't really have to be this, but it just turned out to be a really good transistor to use because it supports up to 3 amps and has a DC gain of minimum of 1500 up to 4000. Now the choice I made here is kind of deliberate and kind of not that specifically chosen because I wanted to power external loads that would maybe go up to about an amp or so when it comes to an LED maybe about an amp, with a motor or something, especially a small ones, probably don't pull more than 
like 100 milliamps or so, but it's more than what the ESP8266 can support. By the way, the I.O. pin of the ESP8266 apparently only supports up to about 12 milliamps, or at least that's the information I've I found online. And that's about 0.12 amps, which is nowhere near enough to power anything that's remotely like a motor, which would probably pull more than 12 milliamps. So just to be on the safe side, I used a Darlington transistor. And since a Darlington transistor can give really high gains, in this case a minimum of 1500, so it tells me that a 12 milliamp signal would be able to pull 18 amps through this Darlington transistor, which is more than what the Darlington transistor can handle, so it means that even if this Darlington transistor will be pulling 3 amps, it's nowhere near the 12 milliamp maximum that the ESP8266 can provide at its GPIO pin. Alright, so to that Darlington transistor I have a load connected on the positive end. The load over here is going to be the LED or motor or anything that can be powered by using PWM signal or pulse width modulation signal. I'm basically going to be using the ESP8266's PWM functionality, which is exposed through the Arduino IDE's analog write function, so that I can control the Darlington transistor when it should turn on and off. All right, additionally, going back to this part, if the load is a motor, since a motor is an inductive load, when it's turned off, it will create a reverse voltage spike, which is not going to be good for a transistor, and it's going to be very bad for the ESP8266. So when we power inductive loads like motors, we generally have a diode that goes in parallel with that load. And that diode will prevent that reverse spike of current to protect the other components from reverse voltages and such. In this particular case, I think I just used a 1N4007 or something along that line. I just happened to pick this because that's what I had lying around. And the loads I was going to put on here wasn't going to be particularly big or anything like that. So that pretty much explains the circuitry I have on my breadboard of the ESP8266 based project. In the next video, I think I'll go into the actual software components behind this project. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you like what you saw, I'd appreciate it if you can give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd appreciate it if you can subscribe to my channel. Also, I'll be including some recommended videos that should be showing up on this screen, so please go ahead and take a look at them if you're interested as well. As always, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.